for the comments, please entertain the fact that let's just say in some dream world that the Pac-12 can actually pull from the Big 12. <laughs>
what would be their criteria? Because in that article there from Desiree News, he actually indicated what their kind of thought process would be in terms of for adding teams from the Big 12 to the Pac-12. Let's look at this thought process right there and kind of see where everything's going to be going. So the thought process for realignment to the Pac-12, he said in this statement, he says that we will look at media value, athletic strength, academic and cultural fit, and geography from a recruiting and student athlete experience standpoint. So meet what he means by that. So media value, eyeballs and connection to TV markets, that's going to be very, very vital for this. Remember here, I mean, that's the big reason why Maryland and Rutgers were added to the Big Ten. USC and UCLA were added to the Big Ten. They wanted DC, they wanted New York, and they wanted LA. That's a big aspect behind all those moves. Athletic strength has to provide some value on the field and also depends on the field. That will be a key point with one Big 12 team here in the future. Uh, academic and cultural fit, I'm letting you know right now, I've seen this a zillion times with BYU, that non-religious is not gonna be a situation, okay? I, I think that they you need a non-religious school. There might be some exceptions for that, but I think that they would have to be very, very particular exceptions. Um, also, AAU and or R1 research status. It's very, very important to them. The fact that we are the, the Big Ten of the last. Oh my God. I'm telling you, that's important for them. And then also geography, relatively close and or a market to add to the TV deal. So just to make sure we're clear here, I left off all the new schools, Houston, UCF, uh, Cincinnati, BYU. Big reason why I left them off, well, a couple of them. One, BYU is religious. It's in the market. They're just, it's not going to happen. They've already got Salt Lake. They don't need to add them. It would have eyeballs, but I'm telling you, they just, they're just not going to do it. Um, Houston and then UCF and then Cincinnati, pretty far out there. Houston's not too far out there. But at the same time, I think that with those new schools being signed over, I think there are some serious situations there with, you know, grant of rights and this and that. I know they have a deal coming up, but I just kind of left them off just to kind of make sure that they were off over there. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I left off Baylor on this list, religious institution. Waco's not very small. You have some access to that Dallas-Fort Worth area, but, you know, not a super big school. And then West Virginia is just way too far out there. So the options here, we have options four through six. Option number six, I have TCU. I do like the fact that it has access to that Dallas and Fort Worth TV market. However, how much access they have, I don't really know. I do know that they could probably say, oh yeah, we've got access to this market. In the same way that, remember, Big Ten was able to make Rutgers a realistic addition to the New York market. So whatever Rutgers is to New York, I guarantee TCU is to Dallas and Fort Worth. So I think that's realistic. Religious school is gonna hurt them. R2 research status, not an AAU school. Really, other than that, access to that market, I don't really see this one fitting very well. Also, we have Kansas State at number five. So Kansas State number five, much more consistent football product than KU, obviously. Uh, Kansas City TV market, I think there's plenty of alumni there, and an R1 research status. I think that they are five. However, I believe that Kansas is number four. I know it's absolutely laughable that Kansas is number four, but I, I hear me out. R1 research status and AAU member, very, very important to the Pac-12. They're like, oh, we are over there. Yeah. Okay, access to that Kansas City TV market. And then also would be a solid addition with Gonzaga if added as a pair. Yes, I know that Gonzaga is a Jesuit school. I understand that. But if they could get, the Pac-12 could get Kansas and get Gonzaga. I, and, and again, if it's only a football or a basketball only or, a, you know, a Olympic sports only situation, I think that might be a little bit more realistic than having to worry about, you know, uh, football or things like that. So there might be an exception there. Remember, I mean, Spokane's really close to Washington State, not too far from Seattle. So would not be unrealistic to see that. All right. At three, I have Iowa State. They are a surprisingly watched program from the raw numbers. And again, those raw numbers were the numbers that people were, you know, uh, from medium.com. They had an article out there that actually they were, they were pretty high up there. So these raw numbers here, you see up here at number 27 in the country, 1.2 million viewers per game. That is really, really a good amount. However, remember here, this is not weighted against... How do I say this? This is not weighted against how many people actually watch them versus watching the team that they're playing. When you see those numbers, it gets a little bit worse. So it's hard to see here, but of these Z scores here, Iowa State, I mean, oh my gosh, they are way, way down here. You see it there down here on this 25 of this list. They're below Boston College. They're just above Cal. Uh, they're below Texas Tech. I mean, they're, they're, they're below Arizona State and Pitt and NC State. They're way down this list. But again, you saw that they were number 27 in the country in raw numbers, but how many people actually watch them versus watching the team they're playing and other factors there, they're a little bit worse than that. 
And also, remember here, they were a former AAU member. They just left. They weren't in the top 65, but they're really, really close. And then R an R1 research institution. Uh, for Texas Tech, I am telling you right now, okay? Texas Tech is investing heavily into their football program. They have access to that Dallas and Fort Worth TV market, and they are an R1 research institution. They're not AAU. But a lot of people like access to Fort Worth and TV market. They're a gazillion miles away from there. I'm going to read a line here from an athletic article that puts this into perspective. And I can't put the article up here, but I'm going to read a couple questions here. So it says right here, in the fear of Texas Tech fans overrunning the stadium, TCU, Fort Worth, is not selling single game tickets for the matchup, instead forcing people to buy multiple game tickets in a package, fair or foul. Now you gotta remember here, they're coming down here to basically remember here, TCU understands that Texas Tech's largest alumni population outside of West Texas exists in Dallas, Fort Worth area. So they said that's the reason why they're trying to prevent this whole situation. So remember, I know that Texas Tech doesn't make a lot of sense. You're like, Texas Tech? They do have access to that market because a lot of alumni it's a big university. A lot of alumni are in that Dallas and Fort Worth area. And then number one, I'm telling you right now, number one, it would be Oklahoma State. By many different metrics here, they are the most watched individually, raw numbers and everything like that. They're the most watched for program in the Big 12 in terms of football. Most watched. Uh, could claim they're kind of in between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. They're kind of in the middle there in Stillwater. Stillwater is really small, but they have the ability to kind of be like, oh, yeah, you got both access to both those markets. And they are an R1 research institution, former Big 8 opponent. They've played, you know, Kansas or they played Colorado before. So I think that that is probably what they would do. Now, remember here, do I think this is realistic? Not necessarily, but if they're going to target these schools, this is the logic I think they would do. All right, guys, get in the comments right now. What do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about my analysis? Do you think that, I know that this is laughable, but remember, for the comments, please entertain the fact that let's just say in some dream world that the Pac-12 can actually pull from the Big 12, what would they actually do? Get in the comments right now, let me know. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. That's it, I'll see you guys later. I am out.